Hi there, Dan Cooper here from Pro Tools Expert, here with a gear review of Sonarworks Reference 3 Studio Calibration Software and Measurement Microphone. Now this comes in two flavours if you will, one of them being a trial kit for €49, Euros, which has the measurement microphone and a 21 day free trial of the Reference 3 software. Uh, the other being a €269 Euro package, a uh, bundle if you will, of the measurement microphone and Reference 3 software. So today I'm going to be testing the microphone with the Reference 3 software uh, in my home studio. And I'm going to be showing you how you set it up and how you use it in your DAW of choice. Now the tools I'm going to be using for this are a microphone stand, uh, a microphone clip which doesn't come bundled with the mic, so you will need a small clip for that. And I'm also going to be using a tape measure to make sure that all my measurements are correct in the room. So to start off, what I'm going to do is move the camera and be back in a second. So this is what it looks like when you open up the standalone part of the Reference 3 software. It'll ask you to select a microphone calibration profile. Now on the side of the microphone, you'll find some digits. This is what you can actually input into the Sonarworks web page and it will give you a file. This is the file that I've already included for this particular microphone. It's its calibration profile. Simply put, it'll be able to work very effectively with the software and the microphone to get the best possible results. So that's already selected. So let's move over to page two. So the next section is where you verify the input channel on the audio interface that you are using to input the microphone and output the measurement sounds, if you will. So I'm using my old Digi003. Um, and it's already plugged in, as you can see, I'll just check it there. And we can go next. And this is where we select the outputs. Again, Digi003, output one and two. And before we can go really any further, we just test that here. Please adjust amplifier volume. My voice should sound in normal conversation volume. Left speaker, right speaker. Very simple. Then we move on to the first part of the test. Now, it says here, adjust microphone sensitivity. Now, when it starts playing the bips and the noise and all that sort of stuff, it will actually tell you if it's too quiet or too loud. So what I recommend is have your monitors set at a reasonable volume, nothing too loud so it doesn't deafen you in the room with all the bips and the noise, but nothing too quiet that the software can't pick up on. So the best thing to do is just adjust the input on your audio interface until the software detects that it's A-OK -okay and then the measurement will continue. Looking at the diagram to the right, it gives you a good idea of where you should be putting the microphone. So having a look in the room now, we have it on a stand in my listening position. I've measured exactly where it should go in relation to my monitors. So it's equal distance from my listening position to the left, to the right, and either way, it's a perfect triangle. And I've marked that on the desk and I've also marked that by making sure that my webcam as a reference. I've got a nice clean bit of sight there because I'll need this later on as a, this is a definite center that I'm looking down. I did speak to the guys at Sonarworks and they did stress that I've got to make sure throughout this process I'm pointing this microphone at dead center throughout. So this is my listening position, but later on in the, uh, in the test I'll be moving this around but making sure that I'm always pointing it at my webcam. Okay, so now let's start the, uh, the measurement. Um, right next to the start button, we have here a little timer, which we can use to delay the start time of the bips. I'm gonna keep it at three seconds. And let's have a little listen, see what it does. Okay, so the software's saying that it's not loud enough. I need to turn up the sensitivity on the mic. And there we go. three dings to say that that is complete and we click next. Right, the next measurement it's saying to point it directly at the left monitor, the actual cone itself. So what I need to do is lower my microphone, I had it earlier, and click start. And then for the right side. Mm. 
Okay, so the next part it shows here, it says review dimensions. Please review measured distance, use fine tune checkbox to adjust the dimensions. So the software's had a good go here at uh, trying to work out the distance between the two monitors. So I know it's not 62 centimeters. I've checked that with my tape measure. It is 82. So what I'm gonna do is click fine tune dimensions and bump that up. to 81 where it seems to be the maximum move along it's great and I'm gonna put this back into the center where it was so I'll check that with my tape measure and it's down the center and back at my ear height and then I'm gonna click start for the next measurement on to the next section it says review the measurements from the literally my listening position again to the front so I can check that with my tape measure again which it is 70 perfect and I'm gonna go it's great and move on so here is basically it's the last part of the test and it gives a little tutorial so what it's gonna ask me to do is make sure it's at ear height which it was previously and then it's pointing down the middle which I've done with my mark on my control surface and my webcam and I'm now literally going to let it talk me through what it needs to do next. It's going to start to take 24 measurements and we've got to move the microphone around. So it's quite cool what this bit is. Um, I'll try and cut between me in the room and what's going on on screen. And you can see the microphone is actually moving with me. Point it directly at my webcam right in the middle. And there's the first measurement. Let's move it to the right. Nearly. Right, onto the thirds. Same thing, point it at the middle of the room. Fast forwarding on through the measurement and this is what you get when it's complete. Simply save the measurement file at the bottom and launch your DAW. So the plugin part of Reference 3 software is located under the EQ section in Pro Tools and this you load in as the last plugin in your master track. I'm going to shoot through this rather quickly as this really is one of those plugins that you need to try for yourself, uh, load up, forget about and just get on working as it's quite a magical tool. So the first thing you need to do when you load up the plugin part of the software is load in the measurement file, which you'll find at the top here where you saved earlier. To the bottom right here, you can bypass the calibration and mix between 100% of the calibration and source. There's also a useful mono monitoring switch function at the bottom here as well. Input signal to the left and output to the right. The output section of this plugin is already turned down, so it avoids any pops and clipping coming from any parts of the frequency curve that is turned up, which is very useful. You can turn it all the way back up if you choose, but I'm going to keep it here as that's where it's automatically set. The middle display shows red for target being a flat frequency response, two shades of blue to represent my room with its faults, left and right and two shades of green to show me the correction for both left and right monitors being applied. Down to the bottom right, we have advanced, where we have filter types for phase properties, which is useful for setting the aggressiveness of the phase, or what I like to describe as the tightness of the stereo image. I like to keep this set to linear when mixing, as I find it really does tighten up my stereo image, and it lets all the subtleties sort of translate really well through my monitors here in, in my studio, which is useful. To the right we have calibration limit controls, useful for honing the calibration further giving you the option to tweak the top and bottom ends of the engine. The last part I want to share with you is the rather clever simulate feature, which lets you experience different virtual monitor setups such as NS10s for this instance. These being called Japanese White Cone Studio Monitors. And you can see there it actually loads up, it's now got a change target curve in red to represent the NS10's characteristics. This I find does work well and it does replicate them quite well, but for me as an idea too far. 
I'm much more interested in getting a better sound from my main studio monitors. As I said earlier, this is the type of plugin that you throw on as your last in the chain on your master track and just forget about. When you've finished mixing though, you must bypass the plugin within your door before bouncing out your work. It seems counterintuitive at first, but the whole point of this system is to make your monitors perform better in your studio space. I've been using this for about three weeks now and have found my mixes are translating as I would expect out of the studio. In mix sessions, I find the bottom end easier to work with. I find I can hear smaller movements in my plugins and more importantly, I find I don't pay any attention to what this plugin is doing, which is a good thing as I don't hear the software doing anything unnatural to the sound or anything in my workflow. Seriously, get yourself a trial for 49 euros. You can't go wrong. You get the microphone as well, which I found to be rather quite good on acoustic guitars. So have a go, let me know what you think, and uh, thanks for watching. Cheers, see you next time.